Hello, friends, family, and my followers. This is Hike360, and I'm here to give you a new hike this week. Woo! Woo -hoo -hoo! My friends, my family, my followers, it's Hike360 here, and we're here to give you a new hike this week. I'm at the Chicago Botanic Gardens today. We're here to do a 2.7 mile double loop. And we've been blessed with some spring showers. Uh, so we are figuring that out as we go. I'm right outside the visitor center, over there. Uh, right now, you need to go to the Botanic Gardens website and reserve time slots to be in the actual gardens. Uh, so keep that in mind for your next visit here. Also, what is open to the public without the need for reservation is the uh, biking and running trail that goes from Lake Cook Road to Dundee on the east side of the park. And you have to be careful there too because closer to Dundee Road, they're doing construction on that part, so you actually have to go behind the greenhouses uh, to get all of the way through. So, like I said, we're doing 2.7 miles today. Let's do it. Let's kill this hike. Well, it's the first week, second week of April. So we came on over to the Bulb Garden. It's on the hike in the book, just next to the Fruit and Vegetable Pavilion. Things are just popping up. I've never been over here. So it's kind of nice to get over here. Nice corner of the world here. Well, one of the benefits of doing 360 video is we can see in 360 degrees, but on a rainy day, the water droplets on the lens may be a problem. So we're going to go back and forth between losing the sky by holding an umbrella above the camera when it's raining more and uh, doing it like normal. Take our chances with the water drops. Cypress tree. That's interesting. Now yeah, we're into the tulip area. Sage, nice. Commander in Chief Lilium, more lilies. Onion. Well, if you had goggles on, that tree branch would have been exciting to duck out of the way. I'm so happy this much is in bloom. Boy, last week, the last week, nothing was in bloom. Uh, two weeks ago was Martin Arboretum. Nothing was in bloom. 
And now we're getting some early blooming. Well, I seem to have lost Ryan. Oh. We just saw a bird fight. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> That's immersive. Immersive VR right there. <laughs> Feel the fear. Feel the fear. I just don't want to get shit on. Hey, this is a are you family. Oh. Yeah, I am. Hello. Yeah, because... Uh, all right, so I turned on the camera and I thought this is the most pretty part of the park, but it is an area that's kind of interesting. The highway's right over there, so we pass this like a million times and we see the wrong side of the fence. So it's kind of finally nice to see what's on the, the nice side of the fence. Yeah. But uh, the bell tower, which is where we're going to go next, and some of these other inner islands and plantings are pretty nice. The main reason I turned this on, though, was it because of the birds? No, yeah, it's because it's about to rain again. So I figure uh, it's gonna be a while before we can get another one. But well, let me tell them about the birds. Okay, tell them about the birds. Uh, all right, so we were just walking, you know, having a good time, and we're walking under the trees, and I see this one nice little bird. It's got like a bunch of like uh, plants or bark or something in its mouth, and it looked like it was building a nest. I go, hey, Dad, he's building a nest. And then all of a sudden, these two other birds just sort of swoop in and. And the one bird drops everything, all the straw that he just brought up, all the hay. And the, the two other birds like chase him out of the tree and like they're all like beaking each other, pecking at each other. Yeah. We were like right, we were right there. Right under it. Yeah. <laughs> wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah, the enforcer birds. Yeah. And here comes the rain. Here comes oh, the rain. rain. Oh. Well, this is definitely a pleasant walk despite the rain. Yeah. All right. <laughs> There's Ryan. <laughs> we are on Evening Island. And it's hard. Well, oh. the trees above us. Sorry. <laughs> the water. This is really hard to do. Uh, all right. So we're on Evening Island. And uh, I particularly like this spot. A bunch of years ago when I needed to kind of be out and um, find some quiet areas, I would ride my bike over here with the computer and I would sit in these chairs in the shade and do a couple hours of work. It's pretty nice. It seems like a great place to be there. Yeah. There's more to the botanic garden than just pretty flowers. Uh, on Evening Island there... This? Yeah. The ducks? Yeah. yeah. Wildlife encounter. There are bathrooms here. They're closed for COVID, but uh, throughout the park, there are kind of the big uh, industrial versions of porta potties. Going back to our discussion at Fullersburg Woods about facilities and infrastructure. And that bell tower is active. Active how? Active like it makes a lot of noise. The first time I was sitting here, all of a sudden, a lot of bells going off. Uh, well, this is a pretty good view. It does get hot if you're not in the shade. The computers don't like the sun, you know that. That's true. Well, do you think we can walk up the Bell Tower? Uh, we can walk up to it. Like Parnell Tower? No. This is not a. I don't. I think it's an attraction. You hear the, the noise that's making? Yeah, the ducks are a little perturbed by us. I don't know what you said, but I don't think you liked it. I like their feet. It looks like there's an office here. That is awesome. Oh, it's a painting studio. Oh, that's even more awesomer. Even more awesome. Well, check into how to get into that class.
I'm fully aware that awesomer is not a word. Those of you who think I don't know how to speak English, it's German I don't know how to speak. Hey guys, I gotta give you a mid-hike update. We have traveled from the visitor center at Chicago Botanic Gardens to Dundee Road, and we're deciding to make this a Chicago Botanic Gardens slash Skokie Lagoons hike because the beginning of the Skokie Lagoons is the exit of the Botanic Gardens on Dundee Road. So we're just gonna cross the street and begin the second half of this uh, adventure we have going for us. I believe that the trail that we're covering in the Skokie Lagoons is about four or five miles, four or five miles, uh, which will put us at a total of about 7.7 .7 or eight miles uh, when we get back to the car. So again, we're gonna show you the Skokie Lagoons too today. The only thing I'd add is this is, so we're not losing anything in Botanic Gardens because of construction, we have to come here anyway and walk behind the greenhouses and the Skokie Lagoons is a loop so we'll we'll be right here when we return so it is actually a like a, a very natural continuation absolutely it's a figure eight I in see that it. regard yeah it is absolutely yeah all right all right so we just touched down at the Skokie Lagoons at Dundee Road and I want to show you this great map of the North Branch Trail in Cook County and the forest preserves of Cook County. Uh, we are right here and I want to mention to you that this red trail, the 14 and a half miles, I've actually rode my bike for the entirety of it and back. And it's, it's a great path. You see a lot of, on the way and it brings you all the way to the city of Chicago and then you can make your way back. Uh, but you pass just so many forest preserves on the way and um, all those forest preserves are great for barbecues and you see a lot of family get togethers. So, very cool. But we're just gonna do this black section here, this black trail, which is a total of 4.4 miles. It will take us around the half of the Skokie Lagoons. So let's do it. We got, some, we got some deer coming up, so let's see, let's see if they do anything for the camera. <laughs> Why oh, are they running? Oh, they, don't, they don't like you. Whoa. I am happy to see that they looked a little strong in comparison to how many times I've watched the deer video from Morton Arboretum. Those guys were racehorses. Those guys were racehorses, yeah. There's one right here, which you can't, probably can't pick up, but at least, uh, you know, there were nice white tails and reasonably strong uh, response here. This is the back side of the lagoons. Uh, the lagoons are to the east of us left. The highway obviously is, is the noise you hear. We're right next to 94. North is west. South is east, that's what 94 taught me as a kid. Yeah. Because this segment is north south, but the road signs are always east west. I never understood that. Yeah. I don't know. But this is the 
this is that second. Right. Hey yo. I turn it on because I really like this part right here. We got the big blue water tower, which normally is not something you like, but that's always been an intrigue of mine since I was a kid, is that tower. And supposedly, during the 40s, 50s, 60s, 19, 40s and 1950s and 1960s, before I was born, yeah. uh, you know, the Glenview Naval Air Station, the Glen, yeah. It was, was, you know, an active air base. And Willow Hill, which is the golf course driving range, was an active garbage dump with all the methane burning off. There were like 100 towers of methane. So there's just a lot of like, as a kid driving around, there's a lot of action. Oh, okay. But supposedly by the blue tower, there are anti-aircraft weapons during they those early years. Anti-aircraft weapons? On the I don't know tower? if it was on it or at the base or near it or what, but I understand there were anti-aircraft weapons there. Wow! To help protect Glenview Naval Air Station. That's pretty wild. I didn't know that. that that's that. pretty wild. Yeah. Now you and I have had lunch on that bench there a couple of times, and this kind of field here with the deer blinds. Yeah. So I know that they have to cull the herd. Cull is the proper word cull the deer that live here every five or ten years. I think there's actually every year. Every year. Yeah. And and obviously somebody knows the number somewhere, but uh, yeah, it's sad for the beer deer, sad for the beer, sad for the deer. Um, I don't know, I'm I, I you know I'm I'm so torn about that concept because the greater good, conceivably um, and we've spent a lot of time talking about prescribed burns, which is technically a greater good. I mean, there's entire ecosystems that are burned away in terms of small birds. And we talked about like barbecued worms and mm -hmm. there's a lot of ecosystem damage there for the greater good. And I don't really know how to, my brain's not big enough to like choose a side. Well, if you know anything about culling herds or maintaining wildlife population, we would love to hear your thoughts uh, on the matter. Or anti-aircraft weapons around the Glenview Naval <laughs> Air Station. <laughs> you know anything about anti-aircraft <laughs> weapons. Yeah. Let us know. Leave a comment. Hey, hey, so this is the middle of the lagoons. Uh, we are on Tower Road. Uh, in between the boat launch and the the canoe launch. So if you go further south, uh, you've got the southern part of the lagoons. It goes to Willow Road. And then if you go north, that's the section in between Tower and Dundee. That's the northern part of the lagoons. Uh, we will be bringing you more videos of the north as we make our way back that way. Uh, but we're going to be looping around now. So. This spot's really cool because this crate right here has a whole bunch of single and double person uh, kayaks and canoes for rent during the summer. And for, I think $15 for a single and $20 an hour uh, for a double canoe or a double kayak, those are the rates. And uh, you get, yeah, per hour, so. You get, to <laughs> you get to explore the lagoons on a kayak and a canoe. Uh, we're definitely going to come back and bring you some videos of us doing that uh, as, as summer approaches or as summer falls on us. But yeah, this is a, this is a great spot uh, right by my apartment. So I'm passing here all the time. I've grown up by here and uh, I know the spot very well. So I wanted to share it with you. And this is where they send you off in canoes and kayaks. So. Right here. Good place to eat lunch.
You want to go to the table? Okay. All right, what do we got for lunch today? Oh, yeah, we've got our famous sandwiches. Dad's homemade bread, sunflower butter, and we've got the passion fruit pineapple jelly again today. So, passion fruit pineapple jelly, that sounds too good to be true. It almost is too good to be true. It is the most tropical tasting sandwich I've ever had. It's really good. Definitely refreshing and Helps with the hike. That's a nice sign they got up there. Yeah. There they are. Oh yeah. Tune in later. So I turned on just because the sun came out. It's beautiful. Beautiful lagoons. Don't often get to see them like that. All right, we are still trekking along the Skokie Lagoons. We're coming pretty close to Dundee Road and then back into the Botanic Gardens. But we're gonna show you this one spot on the, in the Skokie Lagoons that we often go to to watch the sunset or post up some you know, collapsible chairs, uh, enjoy some food, and uh, look out over the water. Right here. Right right here. Other than that, we're gonna come up on a kind of a split here. One that stays along the paved part of the trail and one that goes off into the woods here. I know that if you follow the trail that splits off into the woods, you'll eventually come upon a dirt hill that I went to with other friends. <laughs> and uh, and we would take our bikes and go down this dirt hill as fast as we could. And one time, shout out Albert, he went down super fast and there's like a little bit of a, like a, a curve, a jump at the bottom and uh, he didn't make it, he fell and just got covered in mud. <laughs> Sorry, Albert, I had to tell him. That's right down there. Huh. Now, for a more industrial hike, that's the start of, there is an interior loop right along the um, lagoons here. 
that I took once with REI. Oh, really? Yeah, they had, they had a, oh, I forget, it was like a Saturday noon hike type of thing. You had to sign up for it. And it was, uh, I don't know if it was November or December, and it just kind of snowed a little bit. It was, it was icy as well as muddy. And somebody came with, like right from work, with dress shoes. Oh. And they just, they couldn't grip anything. They're like falling over. Like people had to hold on while this guy was walking. Oh. <laughs> That's so that was when I stopped kind of going to the REI classes because they need, weren't. I needed something a little more advanced than somebody showing up with the wrong footwear. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I learned a lot. So shout out to REI and REI classes. There's a lot of them that are. In fact, there are a lot of advanced classes too. Um, and I learned a lot and uh, went to a lot of park districts with them. And let me take a moment to say, if you visit our website, we have you on 10% off uh, REI's sure. uh, footwear, <laughs> 10 or 15%, something along those lines. But we are an affiliate for REI. Uh, we'll post a link down in the description, and you can take a look at their store and use our code uh, to get 10% off your purchase. We think. We think. But you we can hope. definitely go to the site and use the link over there, and if whatever's happening, you know, will happen. <laughs> okay, we are making our way through back at the Botanic Gardens, and uh, we are behind the greenhouses, which are closed right now uh, during COVID. But this is the backside. Uh, a lot of the the labs and uh, offices we just passed, and then here are the greenhouses. So, I don't know, let's go up to the window. Staff only. Let's go up to the window. <laughs> you can see inside, there's a lot of stuff in the making for this season. I didn't know you could ever go in here. No, this is private. When they say they're closed because of COVID, are these the greenhouses um, or no. the front side? I'm sorry. So uh, different buildings that have greenhouses in them, but this is this is private greenhouse. Okay, so this is their growing greenhouse. Yeah, there's a couple other buildings that that you can go in, and there's labs there that you can kind of peek in at, but those are normally open to the public, but these are not. The guy running and oh have I been in his shoes before. You have. Uh, to the right of us here is uh, the Blanco Golf Course which I have played many a time. It's very nice because it is up against the Botanic Gardens. You so got this. You got a couple of holes that are kind of well right here like this one. This is the back, back nine here. This one might be the back nine. It's been a while since I've played it. Boy, that was good. I just said that I played it a lot of times and then I forgot what hole it was because I didn't play it in a long time. <laughs> no, you're too busy at one active golf course. All right, this is definitely the back side. This is where the sausage is made. Huh. Where the syrup is made. And you can see the rain is definitely coming down. This is hard to do. Like struggling. I don't know how to help. Well, I think we can help by being done. Yeah, hey, there's a good golf ball right there. That is a wayward shot. Look at the ball just sitting up there on the wood. Hey, that kangaroo's got my ball. <laughs> this is one of the best parts of the Botanic Gardens. Uh, it's along the back side of it uh, where bikers and runners go through. Uh, the service vehicles come by here on this road too. I've come here to read, I've come here to draw, um, and it's just a, a great place to, to get a great view, and there's usually ducks hanging out, it's 
very enjoyable. So we're here to share this with you. And I, I uh, agree, this spot is, is meaningful to me as well. Uh, I know in the last video, if we even post the last video because it was such a disaster, I talked about the Glencoe Golf Course, which is right here. And it's the, well, there's a sign there, but I'm pretty sure it's the sixth hole. But you can see, playing this hole, you're overlooking right here. So, I mean, from the time I was a kid all the way through, this is the piece of the Botanic Gardens that I always have in mind because this is the piece that I see. For sure, yeah. Uh, and then, of course, riding bikes through here. And, and it is free, so you can walk through here, you can ride bikes. The expense is parking. So if you're not parking or you're doing a longer hike, you'll park at the Skokie Lagoons and hike through here from the lagoons. Uh, you wouldn't have that, that fee. Of course, it's nice to support the Botanic Garden. But I love this, just all these different types of trees that somehow make it through the winter. Your osprey is showing. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. What? <laughs> Which part? Uh, I just did a play on the, uh, your epidermis is showing. Yeah. Yeah, your osprey is showing. Yeah, hey, you got me tweaking. Yeah. <laughs> Dad joke. Can birds see in color? Doubt it. If dogs can't, then... Well, totally different breed. I mean, dogs are about as close to birds as we are. Maybe they see in one color. <laughs> I don't I know. I mean, it would have to be that you see in something in color because their feathers are for attraction purposes, not for, well, in a lot of cases, mm -hmm. not for camouflage. Some are obviously for camouflage too, but. That's a good point. I just know that humans have three color accepting right. protons. Right. RGB. Uh, not protons. Rods uh, and cones. Yep. And dogs have two. Okay. And butterflies have five. Ooh. And the animal with the most is the mantis shrimp that has 27. So what it, the heck is he doing with all those? It, it's dimensionless. I mean, it's seeing in the future. Yeah. <laughs> it's seeing its own future. Yeah. The mantis yeah. shrimp is a crazy example of nature. Wow. 27. Where did you come up with that? I got interested in it at some point in my life. The mantis shrimp. Yeah, so if the difference of one color recepting protein is every color that we can see, you know, what's five look like on a butterfly? Yeah. The difference, yeah, the difference from two to three, black and white to color, and then three. Would they get onto like infrared and I imagine, ultraviolet? I imagine they would. Um, so, like sonar, I don't know. <laughs> Well, like why not? bats have it right uh well echolocation yeah. sonar um, but would that be a color of protein i just i can't picture it how do you if anybody knows the answer <laughs> to this please if you are <laughs> seeing in four color four proteins. protein <laughs> expert please comment below oh. and tell us uh an example of what that of a way to conceptualize that because yeah. i can't is it uh, Rick and Morty where it's just dimensional or is there time travel involved as well? I imagine if you have 27 or 28 of them, it's got to be all that. So you got to, yeah. Oop, practicing. Well, your grip's got to be pretty wet. I would not call from this weather. 
seemed to hit it pretty well. I think he hit it exactly the way he would, anybody would hit it in the rain. You can uh, you can adopt mantis shrimp. You can raise those at home. Like I follow someone on TikTok that has a pet mantis shrimp. Would it be able to see if you're blushing or if you're lying or if you're happy? Like the heart, like, your heartbeat, yeah, 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 vibrations and. I mean, the only special thing that I know that it does is it cracks. Uh, it, it has like like a battering ram attached to it. That can crack like snail shells, and and those exceed like 160 miles per hour, They're, like as fast as you really know a lot about a mantis shrimp. <laughs> I like them. I Have do. you ever eaten one? No. Are I they just, good eating? I don't think so. <laughs> they're like clownfish, or like uh, what are those blowfish? Poison? Yeah, they're like poison. What? They look poison. I don't think they actually are. I wonder what 20? How many? 27. 27? I wonder what that tastes like. <laughs> Probably really good. <laughs> yeah. It really gets the taste buds going. <laughs> you, you haven't eaten until you've had 27. All right, all right. Enough humor at the expense of the... What's it called again? Mantis shrimp. Mantis shrimp. All right. Good history. Good uh, trivia. <laughs> good something. <laughs> Right. For depth perception. Trinocular vision. So we're still <laughs> we're still talking about the shrimp. We've entered a garden. We don't we're so on the shrimp that we don't know what garden this is. Um, well let's see if there's a guide in here. But we do have an update on the shrimp and a picture. There's no guide in here. Was you have the picture of the shrimp? <laughs> Picture of the picture. <laughs> right, uh, so it called, was not 27, right? It was 14 to 17 or something like that. This is called the Mary Mix McDonald Woods. Oh, it is Mary Mix. Okay, that's what the thing says Mary Mix McDonald Woods. If we're talking mantis shrimp. Still talking mantis shrimp. Okay. The eyes of the mantis shrimp are mounted, <laughs> mounted on mobile stalks and can move independently of each other. They are thought to have the most complex eyes in the animal kingdom and have the most complex visual system ever discovered. Compared with the three types of photoreceptor cells that humans possesses in their eyes, the, si the eyes of a mantis shrimp have between 12 and 16 types of photoreceptor cells. And then it goes on to say, despite the impressive range of wavelengths that the mantis shrimp have the ability to see they do not see they do not have the ability to discriminate wavelengths less than 25 nanometers apart and then it says each compound eye is made up of tens of thousands of amated amatidia cluster oh. <laughs> if anybody knows what that word is <laughs> amatid amatidia clusters of photoreceptor cells. Each eye consists of two flattened hemispheres separated by parallel rows of specialized amatidia. <laughs> awesome. Colle awesome. Collectively. And you want to be my latex salesman. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> Collectively called the mid-band. The number of that word rows in the mid-range range from two to six. This divides the eye into three regions. This configuration enables mantis shrimp to see objects with three parts of the same eye. In other words, each eye possesses trinocular vision and therefore depth perception. The upper and lower hemispheres are used primarily for recognition of form and motion, like the eyes of many other crustaceans. Mantis shrimp can perceive wavelengths of light ranging from deep ultraviolet to far red and polarized light. Oh, polarization. Well, that's a cool technique. What does that mean? Uh, it, it, it's a way to cut out. Well, we use it the way we have it on our glasses is to cut out the glare from sun. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Polarized sunglasses. Yeah. Dude, this thing's a beast. You have a picture? To show the camera? Yeah, to show the camera. Picture for the picture. <laughs> All right, who knew that we would be talking about this today? The rain kind of does it to us. We've been casual this whole hike. It's Man, been a very casual hike. And uh, it is pretty neat to see everything kind of starting to bloom. We will come back in full season 
and maybe that's why it's not so bad. It's a good use of a mask. <laughs> It's a Hike 360 mask. Uh, feel free to get on over to our website for Hike 360 gear. You ready to show it? Oh. Let's repeat that. If you want a Hike 360 mask, visit or, our website. Or a jersey. We have Hike 360 merch, and you can support us by purchasing our Hike 360 merch by either visiting our website or sending us an email at hike360vr at gmail.com. All right, this is a picture of the mantis shrimp. That thing is a beast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look at that. Who knew the Mary Mix McDonald Woods really brings out the mantis shrimp in me. That's right. Hello, my friends, my family, and my followers. It's Hike 360 here. We are finishing our hike today. We started at the visitor center at the Bota Chicago Botanic Gardens. Uh, side note. We were able to get in uh, f with free parking because we are members of the Morton Arboretum. Uh, check out our videos on the Morton Arboretum in the playlist section of our YouTube channel. But yes, we had to get over to the Chicago Botanic Gardens and do our hike. We extended that hike to the Skokie Lagoons, which uh, Dad and I have grown up uh, just enjoying our whole lives. So we hiked around that, we came back through the gardens, and now we are at our finishing point. It looks like we put up 8.1 miles so pretty solid hike today it was uh, <laughs> my watch isn't on that screen <laughs> okay that's 16 13 oh wait that's the time uh so yeah we we had a great day hiking and uh it was raining uh which kind of added an interesting twist as well as kind of different wildlife uh behavior um and i was just playing with a worm that got pushed up from the rain. Uh, we came across a tree that was soapy and, and foamy and we got to find out that that was a natural chemical reaction to um, that happens with trees uh, during heavy rainfall and just creates like natural soap. So that was super cool. Uh, all in all, beautiful day. Really happy. I feel good. And we'll catch you on the next hike. Peace.